Hi guys, I'm Shada, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing our June 2017 calendar page. I've got this cute bicycle illustration that I think you're gonna love, so let's get started. Okay, so to begin, I've got my piece of 200 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. I use a nine by 12 sheet and then I just sort of slice off an inch or a couple centimeters so that I have this nice long thin calendar page and you can use any size that you like. That's totally up to you and anything over 140 pound, you shouldn't have to stretch as far as watercolor paper. Now I've got my little grid here uh, that I've drawn on graph paper with all the numbers and uh, I've used three by three units for each number and um, that's just allowed me to make this nice symmetrical grid. Now I'm going to flip that over and just lay down a nice layer of graphite with my pencil and uh, that's going to allow me to transfer those numbers onto my piece of watercolor paper. You can use graphite transfer paper for this portion of the project. I just like the graphite from the pencil because for something so small and detailed it erases really well and I don't have to worry about smudges. And then I've got my June title and my cute little bicycle illustration on tracing paper here and I'm just sort of thinking about layout. Where do I want to place those? I um, and This is also totally up to you. You can place the title of the month wherever you want. Here I'm going to put the illustration at the top of the page. So I'm taping them in place, getting them centered, and then I'm just going to flip that up and I'm going to go over all my numbers with my mechanical pencil in order to transfer them. Once that's done, I am going to take a piece of graphite transfer paper. I'm going to place it dark side down under my month title and I'm going to go over that with a nice sharp mechanical pencil in order to transfer it as well. And again, I always say this in every video, but it's totally up to you if you want to use transfer paper or if you would like to use graphite from your pencil. I know in humid climates, um, whenever I'm in Prince Edward Island, the graphite transfer paper always smudges and it doesn't erase really well because because we're on the ocean and it's really humid so do whatever is best for you once you have transferred your illustration and your month and all your numbers I like to take my artist pen and go over everything and I'm using the Pigma Microns from Sakura and I like them because they come in a whole range of nib sizes so you can use the smaller nibs for the numbers the larger nib for the month um, and then here I just go over my illustration in pencil because I'm going to paint it but I just want to make sure I can see it really well. So once I've gone over it in pencil, we're gonna do something a little different today and I'm gonna be uh, coloring the illustration in using watercolor pencil crayons. And as I always say, you can lay down your color with whatever medium you like. You could use pastel or gouache. I often use watercolors. And today I'm gonna to be experimenting with watercolor pencil crayons because they're good for very detailed, small illustrations like this bicycle that has a lot of small parts. So instead of splashing a bunch of paint paint around. I have the option of using these awesome watercolor pencil crayons and they're from Staedtler. I've had this set I think for 10 years. Now I don't use them constantly but they've still lasted a really long time um, and if you need more info about watercolor pencil crayons I can link uh, my video on that in the description below. But as you can see, I'm just coloring in as though they were regular pencil crayons. So laying down a nice layer of color, you can mix and blend them. So you can see on the bicycle seat, I've blended a little yellow with a darker brown pencil crayon and that will work really well. So now what I'm gonna do, this part is like magic. I just take some water and a clean brush and I add a bit of water to the pencil crayon. And you'll see as soon as the water hits the pencil crayon, it's gonna turn into watercolor paint. It is so cool. And then you're painting. Take that small brush and the water and you can push the paints around. You can work on your shading and your shadow and your depth, um, but it is so neat. You can just get the pencil crayon wet and all of a sudden you've got watercolor paint. So here I'm just adding a nice clean water to all the blue bits of the bicycle. And when you are painting, you're gonna to wanna to clean your brush in between each color. So do one color at a time, wash your brush um, just with the water that you've got there so that your colors don't get muddled. 
Now, as I paint the flowers, I'll just zoom in here and you can really see how the pencil crayon changes on contact with that water. And then I'm just sort of pushing the paint around and working with it as though it were watercolors. It's, it's quite cool. And I hope you'll give watercolor pencil crayons a try. And then I'll wash my brush and then I'll go back in and do the green. So I did all the warm colors of the flowers and now I'm doing that nice cool green. And doing one color at a time and washing my brush just allows those colors to stay nice and true and I, I won't let them get muddled. And when I do the basket here, you'll see how effective layering the pencil crayons can be. So to get this light brown, I layered a bit of peach, brown, and yellow pencil crayon. And as I add that water, it really comes together as this nice, warm, light brown. So do experiment with blending your pencil crayons because it works very, very well. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the black pencil crayon of the wheels here. And then once we're all done with our watercolor, we're going to just give everything a quick erase and get rid of all the graphite or any pencil smudges that might remain. And then I'm going to go over my month and color it in dark black with my artist pen. And this is just a good time to do that while you're waiting for the watercolor to dry. And the reason I didn't do it before is if I were to drop um, a little bit of water or something, I don't want that to bleed out. So I always wait until the end to add my artist pen and then while we're waiting for the bicycle to dry I'll show you how I illustrated it. All right let's draw our bicycle. I always start with an angled line and it's on just a slight bit of an angle and how large you make this line will really determine how large you want the bicycle to be. So you're just gonna start with a bit of an angled line. From the base of that line, you're doing another line going back and on, upwards slightly on an angle and then you're gonna form a triangle there that doesn't quite meet the top of your initial line. And at the base there, you're gonna do two circles and then you can see how that sort of forms the chain. So start with this triangle part and then add that chain and gear. And this is a really good strong start to the design of a bicycle. Now I'm gonna draw my back wheel and you could trace something round. I like to just sort of go round and round with my pen and I find that gives me a fairly circular shape. And I'll just add a little fender on the top there and that just sort of flows along with the shape of the wheel. And the bicycle seat, I just sort of do this funny little shape. You can play around a bit with that and, and see what you come up with. Um, and I'm just gonna go in with a brush marker so that you can really get um, what that wheel looks like. So that's the, the black part. I always go and add some lines for sort of the inside of the inner tube and then of course the spokes. And I think you can see now how this comes together. So start with that triangle um, and then add the back wheel. Then we go forward and add that front wheel. You can do some lines on your initial sketch to help you stay in line with the back wheel and keep the front wheel the same size. So there's our front wheel. It's, um, it's the same size, same shape. I'm going to add some detail of the inner tube and I'll add a, a little circle right in the center. And then we're doing just a slightly angled curved line going down to that. And then from the chain to that line, we have our um, bicycle frame and it angles up over the front wheel. So it's on quite an angle. And then you can place a second line um, somewhere in there. It doesn't really matter. You could put that one wherever you like, depending on the sort of bicycle you're trying to design. And I'll just slip another fender on the front wheel there. It uh, doesn't go out quite as far. And then there's a little line going from the fender to the center of the wheel. And then we can put in some spokes. Okay, and that's almost everything. The front is really taken up by this oversized basket of flowers. And I do, I draw in this sort of ridiculously large bundle of flowers and leaves, and that's just sort of this lumpy bit. And then I'll draw in some, some floral details. And I just finish it with a little bit of a basket weave design on the basket, and then I'll draw a grip there to represent the bicycle handle.
And then now that our painting is totally dry, it doesn't take very long. I find the pencil crayons dry much faster than regular watercolors. I'm going to add a nice black line with my artist pen, with my Pigma Micron. And this is totally up to you if you wanna do this step. I love adding that, that black sort of illustrative line. That's just very my style and I love the way it looks and I encourage you to do it, but you certainly don't have to. And you can add a little bit of shading and, and some sketchy lines as I'm doing here and I'll also point out that I left part of the wheels um, unfinished and I'm going to finish them simply in artist pen so I didn't add the sort of inside of the tire here that white bit of the inner tube and I didn't add the spokes with any watercolor or pencil crayon I'm just going to add that with my with my pen and I think that looks really nice and I might mention as well, when you are adding your black uh, pencil crayon for the watercolor, or when you are adding your black watercolor pencil crayon, keep it very thin. I think my tires may have got a little bit too thick. Um, I don't think they were thick enough to warrant doing over again, but when you are looking at a bicycle from the side, the black part of the tire would appear quite thin. And I'll finish this illustration up by adding the detail to the flowers here. If you want more info about illustrating flowers and leaves and berries, I have a video on that and I will link that in the description below. But I'm just doing some very sketchy, easy little flowers and coloring in the leaves. And then I'm also going to add a few leaves and flowers that are sort of outside of the colored um, content. So there's going to be a bit of a black and white sketchy element to this as well. And then I'll finish the illustration by drawing some detail on my little basket there. And that's everything for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed doing the June calendar page. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't hesitate to hit like and subscribe. And I will see you soon with a new tutorial.